Psalms chapter 12, verse 6. Yeah, you want to lead us in the word first? All right, so we're going to go to uh, Psalms chapter 12, verse 6. Psalms chapter 12, verse 6. I know what I said. Am I the only one who said it? Psalm chapter 12, verse 6. Okay. Michaela, you go ahead and start uh, reading that verse, okay? Okay. The words of the Lord are pure words, as, as silver tried in a spring furnace of pur pur purified. purified stones. There you go. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified two times? Seven times. Seven times. That's God's word. The title of this uh, Bible study is, Men are saved by hearing words. Not repeat. Men are saved by hearing words. That's the title of the message. Men are saved by hearing words, not by repeating. Faith coming by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. So men are saved by hearing words. Men are saved. Uh, uh, just men. Just means righteous. And we're talking about God's words. The words of the Lord are pure words. The Lord's word is good enough. Amen. That no matter what you come up with, God's word is good enough. Man can come up with all kinds of theories and ideas and schemes and so many steps, the 12 steps to this, the 20 steps to that, and three steps to this. But God's word, when did God's word stop being good enough? When did God's word not be so real, not important? As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. See, they had to take silver, and you take this big old barrel, and you take your blocks of silver and throw it down in there. And up under that, uh, uh, in that, you, you seal it off in a furnace uh, of the earth, but you can use, that's what they used to make. They dig holes in the earth, and then they take fire and put it up in there and make a fire in there, and then put a, a, a stone in front of there, and light that fire in those silver blocks, and they melt that silver. Or you could take a pot in certain days, uh, the Bible, and you can put your silver block down there, take the fire, put up under there. And that, it, it, that silver is going to melt until the, un, the unclean stuff, the stuff that's impure, impure, it's going to melt to the top. It's going to surface all the impurities, all the stuff that ain't good in the silver. And then he take that and do that seven <coughs> times. That's going to purify all your silver. If you've never seen any pure gold or pure silver, you will when you get to heaven. Because the stuff up there is pure as it's ever going to get. Now, we're talking about what's the title of the message? Men are saved by hearing words. Thank you. Men are saved by hearing words. I want you to go to uh, Psalms 19, verse 7. Psalms 19, verse 7. That's uh, Stephen. 
19, verse 7. Thank you. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and pretentious. Amen. The law of the Lord. Now, the law of the Lord is the word of God, his word. The law of the Lord, or the word of God, is perfect. Converting the soul. That's what God's word does. Now, what's the word converting mean? Converting means causing one to be turned around and, and headed into another direction of life. Transforming or changing. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, the word behold means look, watch, and see. All things, not some things. He said all things are become what? Mm -hmm. New. Everything's become new. It should be. But so many people say it's same, but still live the same life. You see? You're still doing the same old dirt that you was doing before you came to Christ. How you say? You ain't saved. You just talk. See? Talk is cheap. When you say, oh, yeah, I'm saved. You're professing to be a Christian. But outwardly in your lifestyle deeds, you deny Christ. Now, here's a back of uh, Titus chapter, uh, let's go one, I think 116. Let's go over there. Titus chapter 116. Let's see this. Yeah, that's it. That's what I want right there. So we're at Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Michaela, you can you find it? Everybody there? That's on Paris. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So you're right on it. You're on it. I know. It is in there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, actually, that's Stevie's backup. Go ahead, Stevie. You were, that's your backup. Sorry, Paris. They profess that they know God, but in works they begin deny Him, mm -hmm. being a most abominable, abominable and dis disobedient, mm -hmm. and unto every good work reprobate. Reprobate. Now let's figure out what that means. Now this is talking about professing people that profess to know God. They profess that they know God. Now look at the word profess. Somebody say profess. Profess. Profess means to declare in words. And in this case, it means to declare in words only. To pretend. To lay a claim to. You're claiming. So I'm professing, I'm claiming, I'm saying in my words that I know God. But in words, what's worse? Your outward lifestyle deeds. Your everyday, day-to-day -day stuff. The things that I know you by. Jesus said, ye shall know the tree by the fruit it bear. Mm -hmm. So your outward lifestyle deeds going to tell me what you all about. Okay. And works they, they deny. Your, act, life or out, your, your lifestyle outward deeds let me know that you really deny Christ. You say that you know Christ, but when I see you, you know what I'm saying? I've been saying, uh, shooting up, you know what I'm saying, uh, robbing people, pulling guns at people. I always thought I was saved. When I was robbing people, man, I always believed in Jesus. You couldn't tell me that I wasn't saved. Now, my perception of salvation was wrong. You see, I hadn't really heard words on the subject of how to be saved. Now, so if I preached you a message on Noah and the ark, or talk to you about some story in the Bible that ain't got nothing to do with salvation, Jesus Christ. Now, and then I give you an altar call. I tell you, come to the church, and then, then we're going to repeat some words, get you saved. How did you say it? If you ain't never heard the gospel. The gospel is the good news. Romans 1.16, Paul was talking to the church at Rome. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it was it, the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. That's the scripture. So now, I, why would I be ashamed of the gospel? But you can't be ashamed of the gospel. 
Because the gospel is what saves. We got to hear something about the good news. If I tell you all about what happened to Noah, I can't get you saved on that. You have to hear words or, or the ingredients to get the doggone thing right in your life. So if you go make some biscuits and you just say, shoot, I think my mama just used flour. Throw some flour together, throw some water on it, and put some biscuits in there. That stuff's going to be so nasty because it's something you mess up. You go make you some cornbread or something, you just say, well, shoot, I don't see you use this. Just put the cornmeal in there, pour some water in it. You're going to have problems. You're going to have to follow the recipe. It's going to be some kind of recipe that you got to follow. Amen? Amen? All right, so this is the recipe that we're going to be talking about here in a minute, but I'm just going to go ahead and finish this. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Amen? They contradict him. Being abominable, nasty, disgusting, filthy, and disobedient, and unto every good work, when it comes to doing right, they're reprobate. What's reprobate? Every trash day you have. There's going to be what you call refuse. And you every, when you sit out here is every trash. So we sit out what? To the curb. Trash. So everybody's house has refuse there. It's everything. You went to the department store. You got all your new stuff. You got your shoes. And then it's certain things when you buy all this new stuff from the department store, the shopping mall. Okay. You go take, you, it's some of the stuff you ain't going to need. What, if you buy a pair of shoes, Stevie, what part of that? Packets, won't you need? The box. Okay, so you, what you gonna do with that? Throw it away. That's the refuse. You're refusing that. That's the reprobate. Okay, Paris, you get you a dress and it's got all plastic all on. All right, what you, what don't you need? You don't need that. Why not? Okay, so that's the refuse. And so that's gonna go in your garbage can. Everybody has a rip reprobate can. We call it trash can. It's reprobate. Anything that's garbage is reprobate. Always remember that. Your mind sometimes can be garbage, trash. God said, I will turn you over into a reprobate mind. Your own mind, your trash, garbage, filthy, funky, stinking mind to yourself so that in the end, you won't have an excuse. Amen. When God tells you, listen, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. What is iniquity? Anybody? Para? And you can't stop sinning. You can't stop doing something that's wrong. Okay, iniquity is when you're trapped in sin. Continual sin. Habitual sin. A sin that is habit forming. So you have a sin. Now you have a sin, and then you have transgression, and then you have iniquity. It's the iniquity that's going to get you jammed up. The iniquity is when you're trapped in it. I can't get out of it. I don't know how to do it. So it's just something you can't get out of. Now, what is a type of, what's a sin that you could call iniquity? That's good. I like that. Thank you very much. Para? Drink. Drink. Can you get addicted? Yeah, you get that. Yeah. 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 You become a drunkard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, anybody else? How do you spell that word? Uh, which one? Iniquity. I-N-I-Q-U-I-T-Y. That's a good one. Habit forming sin. A continual sin, it's habit forming. A sin that causes you to have a habit of doing it. You can't get out of it. Uh, Kara? Can that be? That's. It's something you can do for you to get it. Uh, that probably wouldn't fit. Uh, were you going to say something? Yeah, the adultery is a habit forming. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Keep doing it. You get locked in. Mm -hmm. It'd be like a, a, a porn addiction. That could be habit for them. Gambling. Yeah, gambling where you can't where you can't pay your bills no more. You only want you're not taking care of your family. Drugs. Drugs. Yeah. Heroin. Habit yeah, for me uh, sin. Bite your fingernails. Mm-hmm. Bite your finger. Huh, huh, oh no, no. <laughs> no, that's not a sin. <laughs> but it, it's gotta be a sin. It's gotta be fall in the category of a sin and a sin that you didn't do once or twice. Or it might come up once and twice in your life, uh, but one that you're going to keep on doing. You ever met boosters? Mm -hmm. People that boost out of store? Okay, they do it once or twice. Oh, that's just a sin. Okay, they sin. They made a mistake. Okay, you make sure you get your knees and talk to the Lord about that. You shouldn't have did that. You know you shouldn't do it. You tell the Lord, God, God, look, Lord, I, I went in there. I took, all, I took that stuff off that rack, Lord. I, I'm 